an interesting article over at 538. And let me go ahead and get this pulled up on the screen here. Nate Silver did this one actually today, same day that we were doing this. Says, where should the Big Ten expand next? We crunched the numbers. Now, he goes through and basically says that, uh, how about that? Well, let's frame it first, okay? He's trying to figure out the candidates that fit the Big Ten, the ones for expansion. If the Big Ten is going to uh, jump out to 20 league members, 20 conference members, uh, you know, everybody knows about Notre Dame already. But who else is the best fit? Because there's more that goes into it than just TV eyeballs, right? And when you're getting a conference together, especially a giant conference, you need academic fit, you need uh, culture fit, you need, uh, of course, the eyeballs help as well. You need sports uh, to be competitive. You need all kinds of different things. So he went through and put together a formula that is really interesting. Uh, basically, he's saying that Rutgers was never a fit. That one made zero sense, but at the time, obviously, it did make a ton of sense. Uh, you wanted as many eyeballs as possible from that New York, New Jersey market, and when it comes to cable subscribers, now remember, that was just 2012, 2013, whatever it was, they were trying to capitalize on the amount of people that are in that market. The market size doesn't necessarily matter now. What you're looking for is people that are going to be able to pay subscriptions. Uh, the size of the market does matter somewhat when it comes to, uh, you know, actually putting together good games, etc., and games that people will be watching. So you want as many eyeballs as possible, but Rutgers is never going to draw that many people. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. All right, so he rolls through this, and he talks about the different categories Right, it, Basically, there are uh, just a ton of expansion candidates. So all ACC schools, all Pac-12 schools other than UCLA and USC, all Big 12 schools except for Texas and Oklahoma, SEC schools Missouri and Vanderbilt, Notre Dame, UConn, uh, Group of Five schools Cincinnati, Houston, Rice, and SMU. Um, and that's 38 schools that he's going through, that he's going to measure them in three broad categories. He said sports fit, and market. Now, he's going through, he explains the process. You, you should really go over to 538.com and check this out. Uh, but it goes through, you know, sports, not just football, but everything else. Because you're not just bringing them in as a football member. You'll bring them in both as a colleague, a sister school, if you will, and also to compete in all of the other sports. So it goes through and it gives different sports scores. Notre Dame, of course, the highest, the next highest as far as sports goes from the available candidates, is Oklahoma State. Then you've got North Carolina, Oregon, Stanford, Clemson, Florida State, Utah, Washington, and so forth and so on. West Virginia, actually higher than Miami. <laughs> A little bit surprising. But regardless, um, as far as fit, it goes through. He said uh, some of the characteristics that describe current Big Ten schools he's already discussed. Uh, mostly public schools with very large enrollments, good research programs. It says all but Nebraska are members of the AAU. No current Big Ten members have a religious affiliation. Most are flagship schools in their states. They're all at least decent academically, and some have good or great academics. Uh, so the geographic part doesn't matter. So academic ranking, AAU membership, enrollment, SPF, which is secular public flagship, that's a two times multiplier for him, and rivalries. So there are a lot of things here. Who is the best fit? California. So the Cal Golden Bears actually fit the best as far as this goes. But beyond that, Washington, North Carolina, Virginia, Arizona, Pitt, Colorado, Stanford, and so forth and so on. Uh, the Stanford thing really surprised me. But the biggest thing is because they're not a public school. Uh, the enrollment is a little bit lower. But as far as rivalries go, that certainly bumps them up quite a bit. So a uh, lot to look into there. Uh, as far as the market goes. Now, we can dive into a bunch of this. College football TV ratings, media market footprint, all sport revenues, popularity on Google Trends. Now, this is where it gets crazy. Notre Dame, Florida State, Oregon, Clemson, Miami, North Carolina, TCU, Washington, Baylor. So, we go through, and you can look at the composite score for all of the existing Big Ten schools. The ones that do not fit. 
Rutgers, Northwestern, Purdue, Maryland, Indiana, Illinois, and Nebraska. Those are all under 60. Now, if you look at the candidates, you've got Notre Dame at a 73 composite score. Uh, They don't really fit, but the market size and the sports certainly help. Tier 2, you've got North Carolina, Oregon, Florida State, and Washington. Pretty awesome. Like I, that, Those four would be a massive grab, even if you could not get Notre Dame away from being independent. Now, of course, there are two ACC schools in there. Eh, really difficult. And, and I think the SEC would be willing to fight somebody over North Carolina. But regardless. Uh, then you move down to Tier 3. These are the ones that fall under that 60 mark. But Clemson, even right here, is higher than the majority. I say the majority. Than a lot of those teams that are at the bottom. They're a better fit. Uh, a better uh, Big Ten candidate than even Nebraska. So, sports, 57, fit, 44, market, 75. Their composite is a 59. Beyond that, you've got Utah with a 54, Miami, 53, Stanford, 53, and Cal, 52. So, I think what we're saying here is, mm, Cal may not work. But the issue here, of course, is that if you are stuck and you have to bring in four more Pac-12 schools, Cal would be the most likely fourth one, right? The academics fit, the sports, ads, whatever. But as far as the as far as far the fit goes, it's 87, academically for sure. The market is a 24, but the biggest part of that, like while it is in the Bay Area, nobody cares about Cal athletics at all. Uh, as far as sports go, you know, 44, they're just not super competitive at anything. But the academic side would certainly help things. They are in the Bay Area. You might be able to get that market share up a little bit. But uh, this was an interesting, interesting article. Well worth the read. Go check out Nate Silver over at 538. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.